In this video, we're gonna be creating this audiobook reader that all you have to do is hold the book up to your camera and it's automatically gonna read it to you. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream projects sooner. And in order to create this audiobook reader, we're gonna need some way to take the text from a book and convert it into something a computer can understand. And we're gonna be using OCR for that. Essentially, that just recognizes text in an image. So the library we're gonna be using is called Tesseract.js. This is a really good library for doing OCR. And if we scroll down a little ways, you can kind of see here's an example of it working. We don't really care about that. We mostly care about how we can actually start using it. So if we scroll down just quite a bit of ways, we'll find the CDN link. What we wanna do is just copy this script page right here for v2, because we're gonna be using version two. Then we're gonna create an index HTML file, get the boilerplate code in there, and I just wanna make sure I have that script tag being linked. So there we go, we have our script, and I'm just gonna make sure I defer this. So it's going to load after my HTML loads. There's our script, and then we're also gonna put our own custom script in here. So let me just say script. Js. We're going to defer that as well. And then in our body, it's going to be really straightforward. We just have two elements. We're going to have a video element. And this video element, it's not even going to have a source because we're going to take the source from the webcam of the computer. So you can just kind of hold the book up to the webcam. Or if you're on like a phone, you can just hold your phone up to the book. Then we're going to give it a hard coded width, which we're going to say is 720 pixels and a height here of 560. Also, we're gonna say that it should autoplay and we want this to be muted because obviously we don't want your mic to be making noise inside of the site since it's gonna be for playing the actual text of the book. Also, we're going to have a section which is a pre-tag. In this pre-tag, we're gonna give a data text selector so we can select this in our JavaScript. And I'm just gonna hard code some styles on here because we have some really basic styles. I'm gonna make the font size slightly bigger so it's easy to read. I'm gonna change the font family back to inherit so it doesn't use the monospace font. I'm gonna set it to a width of 100%. And then finally, I'm gonna make it so that the white space does wrap, but we want it to be pre-wrapped so that way it's going to have that pre-formatting. This is just going to make it so that our text has all the new lines and stuff because when we hold up our book to the webcam, it's going to recognize all those new lines and we wanna format our text just like that. So this is where we're gonna put our text. This is where the video is gonna go. That's all the HTML that we have. So now we can move on to our JavaScript. So let's just open up a script.js. And what I wanna do is first open up our index HTML. So if we just open that up real quick, it should open up over onto the side here. There you go. And we just have essentially a blank page because right now we have a video with no source and we have a pre-tag with no text. So it's just a blank page. First thing I wanna do is hook up our video so we can start pulling in our video from the webcam. Now to do this is actually pretty straightforward. We're just gonna take our video. We're gonna select that element by saying video equals document dot query selector. And I just wanna get that video element. And then we're gonna create a function called setup. And the setup function, I wanna make it async because we're gonna be using some async await inside of here. So let's just call that setup function. And this async await code I'm talking about is the navigator.mediadevices.getUserMedia. This is an asynchronous function. So we're going to await this. And what I wanna do is I wanna get the user's video. So I can just come in here and say video true. And that is going to get me a stream. So we can say const stream is equal to that. This is going to get me a video stream from their webcam. Then what I can do is I can take our video, I can take the source object, and I can set it equal to that stream. And now we've essentially hooked up our webcam to that video object. So when I click save, you should hopefully see over on the right hand side that my video is going to pop up. And there you go, you can see my video. We can just zoom that out to a normal zoom level. And you can also enable or disable your video here. By default, it's probably going to be disabled and you have to enable it, but mine is already enabled since I've already created this app. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up an event listener for when our video starts playing so we can actually hook in and start using that OCR image recognition from this Tesseract library right here. So to do that, there's a simple event that we can put on our video. We can say video.addEventListener. This event listener is called playing. And this is going to run as soon as your video starts playing or if you pause your video and then restart your video, it's going to run this event again. This is going to be an async function and we're gonna put our code inside of here. Now what we wanna do is we wanna set up something called a worker. In Tesseract, a worker is how you actually interact with Tesseract and start doing the image recognition. So we can create a new worker, which is just equal to a tesseract.create worker. Just like that, that's going to create us a brand new worker. And this Tesseract object is coming from this file right here that we pulled in from the CDN. So now we have a worker, let me just spell that properly. Now we need to configure our worker. So we can say worker.load, and this is an asynchronous function. Make sure I spell that correctly, worker. So we're gonna to make to make sure we await that. This is going to load up our worker. Then we needed to also load up our language. So we can say worker.load language. And in our case, our language is going to be English. So we'll say ENG. 
Also, we need to initialize it with that language. So we're going to say worker dot initialize, and we're going to pass it in English again. So all we've done here is we've loaded our worker, we've told it what language we're working on, and we've initialized it with that language. That essentially is make our worker actually work. Now to make the worker actually recognize the images, so if we hold up, for example, some text, so we just hold up text like this and we want it to read that text, what we need to do is we need to get an image from our video. So to do that is really easy by using Canvas. So we can just come in here and we can say we want to get a canvas, so we can say document.createElement, which is our canvas. And then we need to make sure our canvas width and height are the same as our video. So we'll say our canvas width and our canvas height are just equal to our video width and our video height. There we go. And then what we need to do is we need to actually get the image from our video. So we can say canvas dot get context. We want to get the two dimensional context. What we want to do is we want to draw an image. And that image that we're drawing, if I spell that properly, is just going to be our video. So we're going to pass in our video as the source. And then we say that we want it to go from our zero coordinate and our zero coordinate to our width and height of our video. So we'll say video dot height. All this is saying is take our video and draw the entire video screen over the entire canvas because our canvas is the same size as our video. So just draw our video onto our canvas. And this just gets the current frame of our video and puts it onto our canvas. And then what we could do is we can actually use that image to get the actual worker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this inside of an event listener because I don't want this to fire once. I want it to fire whenever I want a command to go. So like when I click spacebar, I want it to try to read the page on the screen. So we can say document dot add event listener on key press. And we're going to get that key. And what I want to do is I just want to say, hey, if the code is not equal to space, then I want to return. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that canvas and I'm going to put the image of our video inside of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our worker. I'm going to recognize, which is a function we can call. So I can say recognize, pass it in our image, which in our case is our canvas. So I'm saying, hey, take this canvas image and I want you to recognize the text that's in that image. This is an asynchronous function and it returns to us quite a bit of data. We're just going to put it in an object here and we're going to console log that object. OBJ, just like that. So right now we have a bunch of code set up. So once our video starts playing, it's going to load us up a brand new worker. It's going to create our canvas. And then every time we click on a key, it should hopefully put the video inside the canvas. It looks like we have some issues though, because obviously our video is not playing. So let me inspect our page, see if we have any errors over to our console. And it says await is only valid in async functions. So it looks like we're using await in a non async function. This here should be an async function. Now this should hopefully fix the error. Our video should show up. There we go. And now what I can do, hopefully, is I can pull up something that has some type of text. You know, we can just pull up this here. And if I just get it in front of my camera, and I just kind of try to get it to focus here for a second. There we go. If I click spacebar, it should hopefully try to read out that text. So if we just kind of open up our console here, we should see hopefully something inside of there printed out. As you can see, we have this object. This object has a data property. Inside this data, you can see there's a bunch of information, but the main thing we care about is our text. And as you can see, here is all of the text for the page that it tried to read out. So what we can do is we can get that data and that text from our object. We're just going to destructure that so we can say our data. And inside of there, we want to get our text. So this text property right here is the thing we care about. We can just log that out for now if we really want. So let's just do that. It's going to refresh everything over here on our page. If I just pull up the book that we're using here, and I just hold it up there, and I just click space. It's not going to be perfect because I'm not really lining up things very well. But if we inspect this and we go over to our console, you can see that it hasn't printed out anything yet. Let's make sure we try this one more time. Oh, there it goes. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to recognize all the text. And as you can see, it's printing out all the text that was on that page. Again, it's not 100% perfect because I didn't have it lined up very well, but you can see it's pretty good. Now, the next thing I want to do is just make it read that text out to us and print the text onto the screen. So printing it out to the screen, super easy. We need to get our text element. So we can say text elem equals document dot query selector. We gave this a data attribute of data text. And then down here, I'm going to say text elem dot text content is equal to that text. That right there should hopefully print out the text to the screen. So let's try that real quick just to make sure this is working. I like to do things one step at a time. I'm going to hold this up. doesn't matter if it's perfectly lined up. Hit space. And it should hopefully, after a little bit of pause, print out all of the text that it recognized on the page down here. As you can see, it's printing that all out, and it's somewhat formatted. So that's pretty good. That's exactly what we want. Now the next thing we need to do is just make it read this out. And that's actually easier than it sounds. All we need to do is take this speech synthesis API, and we want to tell it to speak. 
And to speak, we need to pass it essentially a new speech uh, synthesis utterance right there. And here, this just takes in the thing we want it to speak. So we can take our text, and all I want to do is I just want to get rid of all the extra white space because there's a bunch of like new lines and tabs and white space. I want to get rid of all of the white space that we have that's extra and just replace it with normal spaces. This is going to make it so that the actual reading sounds a little bit more natural. So what we can do is we can say, hey, any place that we have white space, so if we just do this, that's the regular expression for white space. Any space that we have white space, replace it with just a normal space. So if we have a bunch of new lines or tabs or like a ton of spaces, it's going to remove all of them and replace it with just a single space. Now, hopefully, once I hold up the book and I click space, it should print out the text and it should also try to read it to us. So let me try that real quick. We'll just hold it up here. We'll try to line this up fairly well at the top, make sure I'm not covering any of it, and get it to focus. There we go. And we click space. And again, it'll take a little bit, and it's not going to be exactly perfect because I wasn't holding it up perfect. But as soon as it loads, it should hopefully start speaking out to us exactly what I was holding up there in that audiobook format. It looks like it's taking a little bit longer than I would have liked. Let me try that one more time here, just in case it was a fluke. I might not have been focused on my window when I clicked spacebar. So click space. And let's see if that works. And I'll make sure I'll also inspect to see if we have any errors. Doesn't look like we have any errors, so there we go. Now it started working. And you can hear it reading out to us everything that was on that page. And that's all there is to this project. If you're interested in learning more about the speech synthesis API and making your computer speak back to you, I have an entire video covering that. It's going to be linked over here. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.